And that lets you save the Who cares? True form life. Green look on the Welcome to Exploring Mind and Body with Drew Tadia. Drew is an expert in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. And he wants to help you live a healthier, longer, and more active life. Now here's your host, Drew Tadia. Welcome to another edition of Nationally Syndicated, Exploring Mind and Body. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of our True Form Life community. Whether you're, ris- <laughs> excuse me, whether you're listening on terrestrial radio across the country or as a podcast around the world, we certainly wouldn't be here without you. I think I'm going to leave that little blurb in there because <laughs> sometimes it's fun to make mistakes. Um, I got Chris DeVecchio on, and I got to tell you, he was a fantastic guest, a wealth of knowledge. He is very interesting story how he kind of got his got things going mainstream. He made the media headlines such as Good Morning America. He was in the New York Post, Men's Health, Men's Fitness. He had a client with the largest weight loss prop bet of $1.2 million, and he helped him lose below 10% body fat in six months. That is crazy. I had no idea. I got to tell you. But Chris has so much. He's been in the industry for quite some time. And you're going to hear from him. And he starts out by explaining about where he is and where he's from as usual, our usual format. But I got to tell you from energy management, time management, sleep. There's so many takeaways here. So much knowledge. Really digging deep and finding out what those goals and what those achievements that we want to pursue that really makes all the difference because any one of us could sit there and say we want to lose a a bit of weight or we want those six-pack abs we have to find the why we have to find the reason and the path to get you there and chris can certainly help with that so sit back and enjoy we got all that coming up on this is exploring mind and body naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host Drew Tadia. All right, welcome to another edition of Nationally Syndicated Exploring Mind and Body. You heard all about Chris in the introduction, so without further ado, welcome to the show, Chris. Hey, Drew, thanks for having me, man. It's great to be here, especially in these times. It's <laughs> nice to have some face-to-face. We are social distancing, so people uh, can feel comfortable knowing that we're applying ourselves to the, the mandate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's our pleasure. Thanks so much for being here. There's a lot of things upside down. I've had quite a few cancellations. No one really knows where to go or what to do. So thanks for spending some time with us, especially with, with everything happening today. Yeah, of course, man. It's an interesting time in the world right now. So um, I think people right now need a lot of uh, a lot of shift in perspective and, and positivity. And, and hopefully, you know, we can help share some of that with people today. No question. Chris, let's give our chance, our audience a chance to resonate with you. Tell us about who you are, what you do, how you got into it. Um, so kind of come up with this new way of defining uh, my, my business. Uh, it's, it's something that I call the gap. You know, you know that space between where people are and where they say they want to be? Well, what I do is I try to help fill that gap with tools and resources and guidance and support and education. Um, I build full turnkey health and wellness programs for my clients that involve nutrition, training, uh, lifestyle coaching, uh, you know, and all sorts of education along the way, helping to answer a lot of the questions that people are, are often stuck on, not understanding the whys of what they're doing. And, you know, there's all sorts of information out there that people can, can find on the internet nowadays, but it's so convoluted and so muddy. Um, there's lots of contradicting points of views and perspectives with nutrition and training protocols, supplementation even, um, that people just get overwhelmed and they don't have a clear path on where they're trying to go. And so my program is really more of a lifestyle uh, program versus just a fitness and training program. Um, although I do believe that fitness is an important component to it, no doubt. Um, but what I find to be some major blind spots and that hold people back from, from accomplishing their goals are poor management skills, and that includes time management, stress management, sleep management, and something else that people aren't really talking about, energy management. Energy management is a huge component. Where are you placing your energy? Are you placing your energy on the problems as opposed to the solutions? Are you spending your time with people that aren't supporting your goals or inspiring you or providing some sort of uh, um, guidance along the way of where you're trying to get to? Uh, 
are you spending a lot of time watching TV? Are you spending spending your energy doing things that don't really support where you say you want to go? So teaching people how to really fill in that gap and bridge that gap to get them closer to their goal is really the essentials uh, and the, the basic foundation of the programs that I build and, and work with my clients. I heard this. This was an interesting statement I heard that says, you don't manage your time, you manage your energy levels. Mm-hmm. And I, I just thought that was profound. It sounds so simple, but we all have the same amount of time in a day. We just have to decide how we manage that time. I mean, I think we all have sit there through our mindlessly flipping through our newsfeed because we don't have the energy to do something a bit more mind consuming. <laughs> so by managing that energy levels, I think it makes a much, much more different mindset than managing those that actual time that we have throughout the day. Yeah. And I also think that that's I believe that to be true. I think it's also sort of related to what value people place on the things that they're doing. You know, if you're interested in something, you know, you'll you'll find an excuse or you'll be a little bit more passive. But if you're really passionate about something, you'll do whatever it takes. Right. I guess a better way to say that is if you're interested, you'll do what's convenient. If you're passionate, you'll you'll do whatever it takes. And I think that people oftentimes are talk about things they might be interested in or think about things that they might be interested in. And and, you know, so their energy is kind of dispersed all throughout these, you know, lots of different areas, as opposed to when you're really passionate about something, your energy and your focus is is almost down to a fine point and you're all in. Um, and so to your point, yeah, I think, um, energy management is really an important skill that I try to teach and, and just bring a level of awareness up to my clients so they can start to see areas where they're, they could reallocate some of their, their energy and their, or their focus so that they could get much closer to their, their goals that they say they want to be at, you know, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, professional, personal, whatever they're trying to, to accomplish or overcome. It's just raising that level of awareness, getting real honest, and then helping identify some of those areas um, where maybe they're they're spending some of their energy in there in places that aren't serving them. Tell me about your background. How did you get into this, or what were you doing before you were in this holistic wellness world? Yeah, so um, Division One college hockey athlete. That hockey was my sport. You're from Canada, so I'm sure you appreciate the sport. <laughs> uh, I was on skate since I was five. You know, so that was my thing. I had my path all the way up through, through college. Um, after my junior year in, in college, I, um, I I started to fall in love with weightlifting. I started lifting weights in college to get put on a little bit more size so I could be a little bit more competitive in the college world. And um, with that, just fell in love with the idea and the concept of being able to manipulate your body with weight training, with nutrition. It was just such a, a, um, a wow factor for me. And so I started competing uh, in bodybuilding competitions in uh, 1999. Give you a little, uh, <laughs> give you a little time frame, 43 currently. Um, and, uh, and so from there, I, I kind of went on my way into a small stint with fitness modeling, and um, after I after I uh, finished my college career, I ended up moving back to Boston, where I'm originally from, for a short period of time, and uh, and then after a couple of years, made my way out to L.A., where I was uh, pursuing a career in in acting, and I was acting for 12 years, and so 12 years in the industry, you know, my body had to go through all sorts of different phases. I actually had to lose a lot of size. Um, muscular size to to be considered suitable for TV. It was too big, <laughs> so I had to learn how to you know get my body down to that size without you know without losing you know too much muscle, but getting just the right amount of muscle, not getting fat, soft, you know whatever it was. And there's lots of different phases that I had to go through. But um, in that time, while I was out in LA uh, pursuing my career, acting career, I was still training people on the side and and building my programs. But going through my own school of hard knocks, through my own. Um, self-discovery phase. Uh, spent a lot of time in and out of um, uh, life coaching uh, seminars. I spent a lot of time in self-development seminars, just literally ripping myself open from the inside out and just doing all sorts of exploring and discovering to just understand myself better. Um, it was part of my acting journey, but also felt like it was also setting me up to what I do now in my with my career. Um, and, you know, continued education, just Working with, I had a, I had a, I had a concept that I wanted to be able to build programs uh, and work with clients, <clears throat> in particular, not just with the training piece. And where I was living at the time, I had a 250 square foot apartment right by the beach, small. And in the backyard, there was about 100 square feet of space that I could. I asked my landlord if I could build this outdoor structure. And so I knew it wasn't going to be an equinox. It wasn't going to be this big, beautiful, like high end chain fitness facility. But I knew that what I was coming in with was a completely different approach to working from the inside out. What I saw as was holding most people back wasn't the fact that they didn't understand how to work out or they couldn't get to the gym or that they weren't finding some 
assimilation of a healthy diet. It was all the other things that were really holding them back, things that were trapped mentally and emotionally, things that were holding them back. They just they couldn't get the motivation to get up and hit their workouts consistently, or they found themselves, you know, falling off their meal plan or whatever diet they set up for themselves. And so the more I dug deeper into these clients that I was working with, I would find that, you know, there were all sorts of lack of self esteem, lack of self worth, lack of accountability, lack of integrity. And so the more I started to dive into those conversations and start to create some awareness and coaching around those areas, it it the results just started to show up. I knew that I had something. And this is early on. This was eight years ago. This is before everybody was kind of going into the whole life coaching, you know, phase. I mean, they're a dime a dozen now and, and not a knock on that. It's just because it's certainly a, a great approach. And I think it's it's there's been a huge shift in the fitness industry because of it. Um, but that was really how I got my start. I, I, I proved myself. I cut my teeth with that whole approach. I mean, I built a, a successful business out of my backyard with nothing other than just my, my philosophies and my, my methodologies. Um, and just one client after another to eventually clients, you know, reaching out from other areas around the country um, through referrals. Um, and then I got lucky and uh, landed a client uh, who was a high stakes poker player who had a bet for $1.2 million that he couldn't get from 33% body fat to below 10% body fat in six months. And so I was working with a friend of his for a couple of years and that's how I got connected with this guy and he and I negotiated a deal and in six months I got up to 8.8% body fat and we beat, we won the bet. It was on Good Morning America, the New York Post, it went global, you know, kind of <laughs> got some awesome. pretty good exposure, which was cool. Certainly an interesting journey that I took as well along with this guy. I mean, he, he I've never seen anybody work so hard, you know, um, and go through it. But uh you know, that was really kind of what gave me the exposure, which I'm incredibly grateful for, to, to just play on a bigger stage and reach more people, you know. And that's just, that's my goal in the end, is just to, to, to not be tucked in this small little beach town, Manhattan Beach in Southern California. Um, I, I, you know, I, I want to be able to share my perspectives and, and help as many people as I can. That's a pretty cool story. I, got, I tell you real quick, I was in Germany, and I, I traveled as a professional athlete, baseball player, number of different countries, and I ended up in Germany. And they asked me, um, they asked, a couple of people asked me to do some part-time modeling. And I, it's not really my thing. I was like, I play baseball. <laughs> so okay. like someone knew someone else that worked for a modeling agency. They sent in some pictures and they said, yeah, we'd love for you to come in and uh, model some clothes for us because mostly were headshots. So I go in there and as soon as they looked at me, as soon as the lady that was fitting me looked at me, she says, you're not going to fit in any of these clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they actually, so they tried to squeeze me into some of the biggest clothes because I, because I have, you know, I've, I was muscular, I had... right? Because it's all Euro fit, so it's slim yeah. fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was there for ten minutes. You know, I looked around, very cool, all kinds of beautiful people. I tried on a couple of clothes, nothing fit, and I left. <laughs> <laughs> a couple autographs. Yeah. That's right. So that was my, that was my, that was my <laughs> experience. You can walk away with, a, with even some nice clothes as a takeaway. Nothing's going to fit you. <laughs> I know. There's a loose, loose. I actually thought to myself, like, how could I lose, lose some weight? But I didn't want to lose that muscle mass for yeah, playing as well. Go run a couple of miles. Right, <laughs> right. All right. So that's super interesting. My gosh, there's so much going on here. Why don't we talk? One of the things I like to talk about is why, I suppose, like that why. A lot of times people will come and they'll say, I want to lose some weight. And I'm like, no, you don't. Like, there's, there's something something underlying there's a reason you want to see results what is it how can we find those results or what maybe what you're passionate about what you were talking about earlier Chris what is it when people come to you I'd imagine it's kind of similar in the industry people in large part say I want to lose weight how do you dig deep and find out what it is that they really want yeah I mean it's different for everybody right um, the way I approach it really is I, I take two different approaches I ask them two questions there's low level stakes and there's high level stakes Right, the low level stakes, in my opinion, such as I want to get abs, I want to get to ten percent body fat, I want to build more muscle, I want a better butt, you know, you name it. Right, the low level stakes, those create pressure. Whereas the high level stakes, listen, I want to be around for the next twenty years. My mom just got diagnosed with cancer, and I want to start taking my health seriously. Or I just, I, I just had a baby, and I want to be around and be a, a strong example for my child growing up of what it means to take care of yourself with love and integrity and self-worth. You know, those high level stakes create purpose. And so I try to get people into conversation where we try to identify what are your low level stakes, what are your high level stakes. And oftentimes people can identify the low level stakes really, really quickly and easily. And usually those are the low level stakes that have been living with them for the last 10, 15, 20, 30 years with that they've been trying to approach 
health and fitness and never reaching their goals because I hate eating healthy or I hate doing cardio or I can't st- I just don't I have such a hard time like I yo-yo back and forth I'll be good for a month and then I fall off that's the low level states that create pressure it's like there's no it's not fun there's no real intention or purpose behind what you're doing other than just to get abs or to get to 10% body fat but what changes in your life if you get that nothing because oftentimes most of these people have a lot of things in their lives that with or without those abs or the 10% body fat, they're still just as happy and they, 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 they've got those things and there's nothing to lose. But with the high level stakes, there's a lot more to lose there. Your child not looking up to you and, and your child not learning by example of what it means to take care of yourself, what it means to eat healthy. You know, you potentially getting sick and then having to react. You know, this is, I try to get people into these false scenarios almost so that they, they shift from being in a reactive state of mind, even though they might not know they're in a reactive state of mind. Just because you're not reacting doesn't mean you're not operating in a reactive state. So I try to get them out of the reactive state and try to get people into thinking about the importance of being in a proactive state. So what, what is even it? With what we're doing right now, right? Even what we're dealing with right now, most people are in a reactive state because people were not prepared. Right. Um, I'm even. I'll, I'll be even. Just a small example for myself. You know, I was not prepared. I probably could have done a better job. This is kind of a minor example, but I could probably could have done a better job of having some more home equipment at my house as a as a trainer to be prepared for having to make a shift with everything shutting down and not having a home, not having a home gym. So now I'm improvising. I'm getting creative. So it's this circumstance is forcing me. I was using 50 pound water uh, water jugs yesterday for squats and lunges, and you know, just getting creative. But I was more in a reactive mode. Right. Um, so getting people into that low level stake, high level stake conversation is really how I kick off my consultations to get to the, the, the purpose of why they're calling me and what they're looking for. And how do you find, is it just the conversations? Like, how do you, are, how are you digging deeper? How are you getting to them to see the picture? Because I mean, we've, I'm sure we've had similar conversations of asking people what it is they want. What do you want more than that weight loss? How can we f- set goals or achievements for you to work towards that i mean i i I ask questions i really try to focus on them as a person as a whole you know when they're coming to me it's not it's not um it's not singular that you're coming to me and we're just going to focus on this fitness journey i'm looking when i build and design my programs i build programs that integrate into people's lifestyles as opposed to just throwing a program at somebody and saying here try to make this work so for me to do that i've got to get a real true sense of who they are as a person from start to finish what was your childhood like you know, are you married? Are you single? Do you have kids? What do you do for work? What's your lifestyle? What's your work lifestyle like? How much sleep do you get? Like, I'm getting a real good snapshot of everything because it's. I have to understand the person in order to understand where they're falling short and understand where the gaps are. Right, that gap part that I'm talking about to figure out where I need to fill in some of these gaps. Show them in parts of their lives where they can make some subtractions, some additions, and some substitutions. In every single case, there's got to be that. Right, but. Oftentimes, there's not a lot of disruption, you know, and that's really what I pride myself on is that I'm going to show you how we don't have to really disrupt your life. I'm going to show you where you can make better choices and make some small modifications and substitutions and subtractions to really start to optimize the results that you say that you want. And so by doing, you know, just a deep dive into just getting to really understand and know who this person is versus just listening to what they say their, their goals are, that's what helps me kind of unravel and start to work from the inside out with my clients. And that's really, you know, what I, again, I say that's what I I feel is the the secret formula to getting really great results. Most time, people, when they come in and start training me, they're actually working out less, but getting better results. Because their bodies are just under so much systemic stress that no matter how great their training program is, no matter how great their meal plan is, the body is the, the they're all the systems in the body, the metabolic system, their adrenal functions, hormone balance, everything is so off because there's no organization to their daily lives and they're so stressed out that the body's just not performing at all, no matter how good you take care of, or how, how good your training program or your nutrition plan is. So getting inside, understanding people, and then structuring a program that shows them, hey, listen, maybe maybe don't add this in today. Maybe you want to take this out. And then the next, and later on, instead of going to bed at 11 o'clock at night, you're going to start going to bed at 10 or 10.30. Instead of, if you've, had a, if you've had an intense day at work, maybe that's not the day that you go to the gym. Maybe that's the day you come home and take an Epsom salt bath. 
and you focus on doing some mobility and stretching and foam rolling and work on improving just getting connected to your body and de-stressing the body. There's a lot of different pathways to to wellness. And you know, I, I find that when most people come to me, that they they think they're looking for fitness, but really what they're looking for is wellness. And wellness falls under the umbrella, the category of what I call my one verse twenty-three philosophy. The one hour a day you spend in the gym is far less impactful than what you do with the other twenty-three hours of your day. And that includes sleep, nutrition, time management, stress management, energy management, self-talk, all of these components. Tell us about what your nutrition philosophy sounds like or looks like. How do you transition your clients from nutrition-wise from where they are to where you'd like them to be? Yeah, so it's it's always interesting. Again, that's kind of an individual case basis. Um, Obviously, there's ways that I can, there's, there's different levels that I can enter people into into their meal plans, introduce it. I can introduce them at a level 10 or I can anywhere in between one to 10. Um, and depending on the individual and I kind of gauge that, I get a sense of of what level we want to go and we get into a conversation asking them what level they want to go. Um, I'm really big in terms of an anti-inflammatory approach with nutrition. It's really important. Um, I've been doing this for 20 plus years and I will say that I've, I too have, there's some areas in, in, inside of nutrition that have even been major blind spots for me that I've you know, really spent a lot of time educating myself and learning that there's certain foods that, that contribute to inflammation in the body. And so by identifying specific foods with my clients and helping them understand what foods are inflammatory, what foods are anti-inflammatory, I take the approach of outlining what a, what a meal plan could look like for them based on their dietary uh, restrictions or likes or dislikes. Um, but really taking an anti-inflammatory approach. For example, um, considering your food sources, what your what your food eats, we eat. So I'm really big on grass-fed beef as opposed to grain and corn beef. Uh, I'm really big on wild-caught fish versus farm-raised. Um, other things like chicken and pork, um, ground turkey, good protein sources, but those animals are grain, corn, and soy fed. So we're consuming those animals that's also going into our body. Grain, corn, soy, wheat, gluten, all of these things are inflammatory to the body. So <clears throat> not everybody has access to grass-fed beef or wild-caught fish or you know those types of approaches to nutrition can certainly be a little more costly for some people. Um, so that's why I say there's different levels of how hard you want to go into that meal plan. Do you want to go at it at a 10? Do you want to go at it at a 6? What's reasonable? What's your desires? The importance of trying to take more of an anti-inflammatory approach is that it reduces lymphatic fluid buildup in the body, which can mimic body fat. So somebody who might be at 10 or 12% body fat, which is relatively lean for the average person, might reflect what looks like maybe 18 to 20% body fat because their body's inflamed and they're carrying a lot of lymphatic fluid in their body. Their face might be swollen. They might be battling chronic fatigue. Um, they might have joint pain. Um, they might have digestive issues. Uh, you know, some of these are symptoms of, of inflammation. And so ways to improve that is by emptying the inflammation bucket by cons- taking into consideration the sources of food that you're consuming. Um, so that's really kind of my, my, my approach that I take with nutrition, but it's everything is always it, it is custom design when I build all my programs because I just respect the fact that not everybody, number one, has the means to to approach it at a level 10. And some people just mentally and emotionally just don't have the – they're just not there yet. They're not like for them to take a step from the meal plan, the way that they're eating currently, to just going super hard against a new approach is a little. It's a little aggressive, and so they need to slowly progress into that. And that's a conversation, right? I mean, it's it's not me just making the decision, saying here do this. It's about us having some open dialogue and saying, what are you willing to commit to? What's reasonable for you? All right, Chris, we are running a bit short on time here, but I want to ask you if there's anything that we missed that you wanted to cover before we wrap things up here. Hmm. Yeah, I think there's three things that I really try to um, accomplish with my program. <clears throat> this, the three pillars of success, what I consider to be the three pillars of success. One is attitude. Are you open-minded? Are you open-minded to new things and new perspectives? Two, awareness. Are you present? Are you in the moment? Are you self-aware? And three, accountability. Are you willing to hold yourself accountable with the good things and the bad things? And I think that when you are able to get those three 
pillars in line and operating in your own personal life, that it's a really, really strong foundation for success. And, you know, most of the clients that I work with, um, you know, are busy executives, people who have children and, and businesses and, and very, you know, uh, successful careers where they think that fitness just doesn't have a place or health and wellness just doesn't have a place in this busy schedule, their busy lives. And, you know, I really pride myself on being able to design programs and, and open people's eyes to the possibilities that you can make it work. It's just having the information and the education and then having the support to teach you how to, what I call, master the art of adjustment. We have we set up a really strong game plan and we put up a really strong structure that we both agree to. And then as things come up as they naturally do, I teach my clients how to adjust in the moment on the fly to stay in compliance with their plan, whether it's adding something in, taking something out, or whether it's just saying hitting pause and having to stop for a moment and reassess. So um, you know, I just want everybody to to know that it's possible. You know, and I, I think that's a really powerful. It's powerful to know that you can make this happen by educating my clients and giving them the information and the support. I feel that I empower people to take control, stay composed, and not put pressure on themselves, as opposed to seeing this the long the long game of what they're doing and, and how they can manage and handle it all. Awesome, Chris. If anyone wants more details or if they want to follow you or find out about your products and services, where would they go? A um, few places you can check me out. You can go to my website, which is www.chrisdevecchio.com. That's C-H-R-I-S-D-I-V-E-C-C-H-I-O.com. Uh, Instagram, it's at Chris DeVecchio, and Facebook is Chris DeVecchio as well. Um, constantly putting up lots of information, sharing lots of content you know, on, on all my platforms. Lots of great free information uh, for people to, to get their hands on. We put out uh, monthly blogs um, for, for people to just get more information on different tips and, and tricks. Uh, and if anybody ever wants to reach out, they have a question specifically, they can always reach out uh, through Instagram, Facebook, uh, or they can shoot me an email that's on my website. Fantastic. That was great, Chris. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us and expertise. I think that's tons of information. Always a pleasure to sit across from someone like yourself to learn a bit more about the industry. Thank you. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Exploring Mind and Body. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community. I so much appreciate Chris coming on and sharing his expertise with us. So much valuable, so much takeaways, so much value, I should say. So many takeaways. I hope you got something out of that interview. I think with each one of these interviews, each one of these guests we bring on, there's at least a few things to take away that we could implement in our lives to help us live that healthy lifestyle that we're looking for, especially when we're looking at the holistic avenue, if you will. More details are at exploringmindandbody.com. If you ever miss a past show, you can always check out past shows there. We're also on facebook.com slash trueformlife, posting up there a couple times a day, along with our story and instagram.com slash drewtadia. That's another place where we'd love to connect. If you're listening or enjoying the show, feel free to tag us there. Let us know how that's been going for you. If you have any guest suggestions, we'd be happy to reach out and bring on more new and interesting guests which is something that we're always working on we hope you are safe and healthy and happy with your families regardless of your situation we know at this point in time this is a challenging situation in the world and we just want to wish you um, a happy healthy wherever you are it's it's uh yeah it's definitely something we didn't get into at the moment but maybe in the future you and you could be listening to this years down the road as well or months maybe things will be back to normal but at this point in time of this recording the coronavirus is basically frightening the world so we're hoping that you guys are doing okay wherever you are wherever you're listening and uh, we're always here for your support you can always reach out you can always let us know what we can do to get you on track, get you going in the right direction, or what we can do to help you out. More details are at trueformlife.com, our main website, where we have our products and services and more ways to help you reduce stress, improve digestion, increase energy. So shoot us a message if we can do anything to improve your health. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out of here. As always, I'm your host, Drew Tadia, in health and fitness for a better world. 
Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com.